Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is go through here and create my correction curves for each of these. So I'll just start at the top, magnitude L, EQ. All right, we get the EQ window. And uh, this part down here, you can hide it um, if you want. It's not really all that necessary to have it there, but if you prefer to keep it there, that's totally up to you. I'm just going to hide it. So again, make sure your equalizer is reface. Make sure that your room curve is on. And we can see here that the settings I put in the preferences have populated uh, over here. I have 200, 200. I have 0.5 for the low frequency rise, and I have uh, 0.6 for the low, um, I'm sorry, the high frequency fall. Now the target. This needs to go somewhere in the vicinity of my lowest dip, okay? So maybe... This dip right here is pretty low, so I'm going to take this down to about maybe 66. This can be fixed later. Um, basically, everything above this target is going to be brought down to the target. So the overall level of my filter will drop a little bit, but that's okay. Uh, it will not correct anything below this um, any more than these boost settings over here will allow them to be boosted. Okay, so we're just going to go ahead and use these settings. Uh, make sure this is 20 to 500. And then the rest of this looks okay. So hit match response to target. Now we can see that the region from 500 around here and below has been matched to the target and everything above has pretty much been ignored. This is okay. All right. So come down to save filter settings to file. This is my left side. So I'm going to pick left front and then inside of tutorial two, which is a folder that I have created for this project. I have several folders. Okay. I've made a folder called magnitude banks. This is the one I'm going to save into. I'm going to call this magnitude L bank one. So magnitude L bank one, save this and then generate a measurement from the predicted response. So basically it's going to take this and it's going to turn it into a new measurement for us, which we can see right here. Okay, so I'm going to rename this as bank two. Technically, this one has the settings in it for bank one, so I'll just go ahead and change that name also. Okay, now make sure that bank two is selected. Come back into EQ. All of these settings should be the same, including the target level. And then we're going to change this. We're going to change this to 500 and we're going to change this to 20,000. Okay. So it's 500 to 20 K, which is going to correct from here to here. So we're going to go ahead and let REW calculate this. And here we have the majority of the uh, response corrected now. There's a little bit of weirdness up at the top, which I can fix by coming in here. I'll give myself a filter at 20,000. And this only needs to come down a couple of decibels. So we'll do minus two. That might have even been too much. Let's uh, bump this back up a little bit. Maybe one. Okay, that looks good. We'll hit this, it reorganizes the filters. So they're in order. And then we're looking at this result. Okay, so this is going to be saved as bank two. So again, save filter settings to file, 
change this to left front. We'll grab this and just change the number to two. Generate measurement from predicted once again. So now we have this result. Okay. Now let's go ahead and keep everything in the same color scheme here. So I'll make these red. And this becomes bank three. All right. So we have one more step to do. Come back into EQ for bank three this time. Again, all these filter settings should be the same. Change this to 20. This way we have full range from 20 to 20K. One more time. RIW comes through here and readjusts this so that it closely, as closely as possible, matches this target. Now I'll just go ahead and hide the original measurement. So this is our final, this is what we're looking at. I've got one place here that I'm going to come in and add a new filter. Okay, this is approximately 136, 137. And I'll bring that down one decibel to start. Maybe give it a Q value of seven. Nudge it down a little more. Um, just to more or less satisfy my OCD. <laughs> uh, let's see. Maybe I can bring this one down as well. What is that, 99? Okay, so we'll just take this down half a dB with a Q of 10. That pretty much does it. This one here is really small. I'm not really going to worry about that. So I'll organize these again. Save filter settings to file one more time. Left front. Change this to bank 3. And save it. Okay. Now generate measurement from predicted one more time. This gives us what I like to call my prediction. So this is magnitude left prediction. Okay, so this represents what my final uh, frequency response is going to look like. So if I just select it, this is what I should be able to expect to some degree. <laughs> Uh, from my left speaker after the correction filter has been applied in terms of its frequency response. Okay, so it should be relatively flat. It might be a little messier than this, but this is the predicted target uh, result. Okay, so now all I have to do is repeat this process for the right side. 